Aleluya. Potakot, can you shout a loud hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Um, it is my joy to be here. When I came in and I saw vibrant people celebrating Jesus, I knew for a shorty that tonight will be someone's encounter in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. My honor to God's servant, Pastor Bellemina. God bless you, bless you, bless you. Let's give him a big, big hand clap. And then my honor and salutations to all the men and the women of God here represented. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that tonight Jesus will give you an unforgettable encounter? I give you a guarantee that for some of you, this will be the night that will begin another dimension of your life, another dimension of your ministry. In the name of Jesus. Now here's what I want you to do for me. Three things before you sit. Number one, I want you to be very, very sensitive as you listen because the power of God follows his word. The assignment of the power of God is to validate the speakings of God. That means if the word of God is not sent forth, his power has no assignment. It's important you understand this. That means when you pay attention to the word of God, it means then that you are prepared to experience the power of God. Because the Bible says the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. So I request, number one, that you pay rapt attention, undivided attention as we hear him speak to us tonight. Number two, I want you for the sake of this crowd, since it is a crusade, do me a favor to be your brother's keeper. Um, especially when the power of God comes upon people. Um, I want you to be very, very sensitive. You don't have to be an usher. Depending on the ushers alone, um, they're going to be stretched because there's a crowd of people. So if someone is under the anointing close to you, please help manage them so that they do not injure themselves. If I do request that you bring them out, then you help to bring them out. Otherwise, you just manage them. Number three, I want your faith to be alive tonight because... I want to tell you in truth that he never calls the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Many of you have left all kinds of things behind to be here. Some of you are here right now with medical reports. Some of you are here right now with impossible situations. Some of you are here right now crying and saying, Lord, if you do not visit me, my life, my ministry, my family, this God that we serve is a mighty God. And in the name of Jesus, he will arise as such over someone's life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to shout after me. Say, Father. Father. One more time. Shout it. Say, Father. Father. In, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Give me an encounter tonight. <laughs> Turn it into prayer. Go ahead and begin to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, give me an encounter tonight. Give me an encounter tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we are gathered tonight in the name of Jesus because we believe in you. We believe in your power to save, your power to heal, your power to transform, your power to deliver. We decree and declare that tonight will be an unforgettable encounter. Amen. We decree and declare that everyone in need of salvation will encounter Jesus tonight. Amen. And that every sick body here represented will be healed. Amen. Every oppressed be delivered. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now before you sit down. If you can. While we were praying, I just sent something in my spirit. And if you allow me, I'm seeing the number 11, 1-1. One, one. And of those 11 people, the Lord is saying there is captivity that has tied your family down. And God wants to bring you liberty right now. Listen, please. I'm going to pray. And the power of God will come upon those people. I'm seeing the number 11. Very quickly before we get to the word. That yoke of darkness is about to leave. I stretch my hands now. Please, I want you to bring them out right now. I just saw fire. 11 people. I don't know what it is that has oppressed you. In the name of Jesus, I command every power that is not of God that has tied anyone's destiny in the name of Jesus Christ release God's people now release God's people now release God's people now please bring them out if you can release God's people now release them now release them now I come in the name of Jesus and I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, that everything that every altar sitting on anyone's destiny, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, the risen Christ, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Have won it all for me. This is our victory in Christ. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. One more time. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all Right now I declare especially for those who are in front in the name of Jesus the Bible declares that he that the Son sets free is free indeed therefore by this mantle and this unction I command every power of darkness over God's people leave now leave now we bring you liberty that is only found in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God and we declare that this liberty remains permanent over your life. Every legal access the devil has over you, by the blood of the eternal covenant, we declare you are delivered now and delivered forever. Delivered now and delivered forever. Delivered now and delivered forever. 
for in Jesus matchless name we pray now you may be seated God bless you you may be seated God bless you we are going to be very brief tonight and I want to walk you through within the minutes that we have through a journey a spiritual journey because I believe that tonight is a very defining moment for someone here seated and the many who are following by way of television following by way of the internet hallelujah I want to describe for you three strategic phases in a believers life the believers journey so that you can identify tonight which of the faces that you are in and then to know how to release your faith to maximize that which God is doing especially in this season it is important for us to be discerning enough to know and to understand what God is doing per time per season there has been a global advocacy of the move of God revivals upon our nation Nigeria Africa and across the globe and that is correct except that if we do not understand the progression of the believers journey as far as you're walking with God is concerned you may abort destiny not knowing hallelujah please pay attention now please look up many of you have wondered why it seems as though God uses certain people in very mighty and significant ways it looks like in every generation there seem to be a few people who are mightily used by god not just in ministry as we know but in, in business in government and then it looks like a majority of others just crouch around the corridors of destiny not knowing what to do with their lives and yet the bible very clearly tells us that in christ we have been predestined everybody has a destiny in christ hallelujah now please listen very carefully the believer's journey in fact for you to be a believer the foundation of your walk with god is your encounter with the lord jesus christ please listen very carefully as simple as this sounds you will be surprised how many people have been around spiritual things around church respectfully speaking perhaps they have risen to the position of leadership at different levels but they have never truly encountered the lord jesus they have encountered a man of god they have encountered um doctrine profitable they have encountered good people they have served diligently but they have not encountered the lord jesus the greatest need of an unbeliever that means one who has not received jesus the greatest need of an unbeliever is not counseling the greatest need of an unbeliever is not healing the greatest need of an unbeliever is not deliverance. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not prosperity. These things are all wonderful. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not education. The greatest need of an unbeliever is none of these things. According to divine priority, the greatest need of an unbeliever, listen carefully, it's not even an encounter with angels. It's not even the gifts of the spirit. No. In order of priority for your spiritual journey to be correct and profitable. The starting point of everyone's spiritual journey provided it is Christ and his purposes that you desire to see established in your life. The greatest need of a non-believer is an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down it is important that the Jesus you are describing is the son of the living God there can be Jesus as the name of someone 
I, I understand there's a footballer that has such a name. And there are many other people across the globe that have that name. So that we are not confused. The Jesus we are talking about is Jesus the son of the living God. I don't care what you know. Respectfully speaking, I don't care how long you have served. I don't care how morally excellent you are. I don't care how excellent of a commu or communicator or whatever it is that you have that represents an advantage in your life. Spiritually speaking, you have not begun the believer's journey except and unless you encounter Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. But apostle, I saw an angel. An angel is not Jesus. But apostle, I went to heaven as profitable as it is. Going to heaven in a visionary encounter does not automatically translate to salvation. Listen, if we do not culture believers and the body of Christ to understand the correct ordinances of the believer's journey, we are going to have so many people around the corridors of spirituality without a genuine identification. When we started with Christ, when we started in the faith, I remember the old folks would come and say, have you received Jesus as your personal? That word personal, not corporate, not we worshipped and the presence of God came down. That is not salvation. I can tell you that many people have not encountered Jesus, the son of the living God, by making a definite intentional conscious declaration acknowledging his substitutionary sacrifice and the fact that he is lord he is savior and king if you're with me say amen. amen the bible has a few things to say about jesus number one it says for god so loved the world john 3 16 that he gave his then now only begotten son today we will not say he's his only begotten son today we will call him the firstborn among we the begotten are we together so he says that whosoever believes in him he should not perish but have life everlasting or life eternal then he says god did not send his son to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved apostle paul in mentoring the church in rome gave us the biblical pattern and the biblical salvation uh, the biblical pathway for receiving salvation in romans chapter 10 please from verse 8 to 10 romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 i'll quote for the sake of time it says that the word is nigh thee are we still together in your mouth and in your heart someone say in your mouth please shout it say in your mouth say in your heart your mouth and your heart must play an active role otherwise salvation cannot be ministered to you wishing to be saved does not get you saved hoping to be saved does not get you saved Planning to be saved does not get you saved. Crying to be saved does not get you saved. The Bible says the heart and the mouth are the two principal tools as far as the administration of the life of God is concerned. Verse 9 says, verse 9, please give it to us. It says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, not with your mind, with your mouth, the Lordship of Jesus. Believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. It leaves you with a promise. It says, thou shall be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then it says, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. If at any point in your journey, your Christian journey, you cannot remember intentionally, consciously, and willfully believing in your heart 
that Jesus came to the earth. He died, resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit to purchase redemption and salvation for you and that you have not verbalized it consciously. I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but I have to tell you by the integrity of scripture tonight that as far as heaven is concerned, you are not saved. It's as simple and as honest as that. And let me encourage fellow servants of God and co-laborers in the gospel. It is important that we do not get too advanced to a point where we see as basic elementary or primary the fact that members and people around us need to be saved. Sometimes in a bid to pursue heights and depths in the spirit and that is wonderful and profitable. We ignore what we believe to be elementary the subject of salvation and we do so to our detriment. So we have many people who are sound in Greek and Hebrew. We have many people preaching even in conferences. We have many people who are sound as far as the understanding of the doctrine of scripture is concerned. Except that that is just a theoretical head knowledge like academics. As far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, that work of regeneration that comes by acknowledging Jesus has not happened. Which is why it is possible that you can see very intelligent, very spiritually sound persons, but you do not find the character and the fruit that befits a genuine encounter with Jesus. Because intellectual prowess is not equal to salvation. Is someone learning now? So this is the first phase and the first juncture as far as the believer's journey is concerned. The foundation. That means if you ever find anybody who says, I want to walk with God. I want to live a purposeful life. I want to live a meaningful life. The first port of call, you can tell him go to church. You can tell him meet a man of God. You can tell him come for a wonderful crusade like this. But all of these are only a means to an end. The end being Jesus. Jesus had this to say about himself. He said, I am the way. Do you believe that? He said, I am the truth. And he says, I am the life. That no man comes to the Father except through me. In fact, the Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. The name of Joshua Selman cannot save you. Even though you love the name, it has no power in itself to administer salvation. Have you met Jesus? Don't tell me I've been in church for 10 years. I congratulate you for your consistency. But as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, the scribes and the Pharisees were already around the things of God. They were masters of doctrine, masters of the law. Yet Jesus looked at them and said, Ye err not knowing the scriptures. He said, The scripture testify of me. Longevity around spiritual activities, as profitable as it is, does not automatically bring salvation. That is point one. Is someone following now? So the greatest need of a non-believer, please learn this as a rule of thumb, that every time you see a man who does not know Jesus, more than the welfare that you give him, more than the invitation to church, the greatest cry of heaven over that individual is his salvation not just his children not his academic pursuit alone all those things are wonderful but the highest spiritual priority the point of focus for any unbeliever is that he comes to know Jesus now the second phase of that journey are we still together I presume that many of us here by the grace of God and based on the integrity of Scripture can boldly say that we are saved that we have acknowledged the lordship of jesus and to those many i congratulate you for making the noblest decision that any man can make as far as this side of god's kingdom is concerned but it does not stop there this is where i want you to pay attention now because many believers 
who now come to Christ do not know what else to do with their lives. Please pay attention. Some of you may be victims of this now. It is true that you are saved, but you probably were not guided to know what else to do. As far as your journey in the pursuit of God's spirituality, purpose, and destiny is concerned. What do I do now that I've encountered Jesus? Many years ago, attending the crusade of the great Reinhard Bonke, they used to have a, a, a leaflet, a little book called Now That You Are Saved. It was an attempt to provide guidance that from the point of salvation, that is only the beginning of the journey. It does not stop there. Unfortunately, there are many believers who camp around the gate of the kingdom. You are saved, genuinely so, congratulations. But they are never able to live effective lives. They have dreams of being prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists, businessmen, captains of industry, great men and women who have mighty and marvelous prophetic destinies. But many die without actualizing that destiny because they do not know that there is still a step after salvation. Salvation is priority and it is the first step, but not the only step. Is someone learning now? The second phase of the believer's journey, if you're writing, please write, is called the phase of transformation and renewal. So the first is an encounter with, the, with um, Jesus, the son of the living God, that translates to your new birth experience like we call it. The second phase is renewal and transformation. Someone shout renewal. Say transformation. One more time. Say renewal. Say transformation. Because you see, according to scripture, the character of the new birth experience is that it primarily affects your spirit first. It is a spirit to spirit encounter. But as you know, man is tripartite. A spirit that lives in a body having a soul, the faculties of the mind, the will, emotion, and intellect. And all these have roles to play as far as your growing in God is concerned and actualizing destiny. So it is possible that your spirit is saved, but that your mind is not yet transformed. And it can abort the potential of that which you have received in your spirit through the new birth. Are we together now? In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says, having their understanding darkened, Ephesians 4, 18, it says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. So when your mind is unfruitful, you are not able to be a useful vessel in the hands of God. When you get to the realm of renewal and transformation, listen carefully. There are three principal forces that must be released in your life for that phase of your life to be profitable. Number one is the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please write it down. While it is true that the Holy Spirit plays an active role in the administration of salvation, there is the office of the Holy Spirit and the function that he plays in the life of the now believer in Christ. Are we learning now? If you are with me, shout amen. Let the devil hear you shouting amen. So I said that the first phase in the believer's journey is your encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Then you get to the phase of renewal and transformation. And this is a long period in the believer's life. Determined by your zeal. Not just the grace of God. The, the same Lord is rich unto all. It is at this phase that many believers separate themselves. Into various levels of spiritual possibilities. The same salvation is administered at the point of confession. But now the journey of renewal and transformation. You are introduced to the person 
and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had time to teach on the Holy Spirit. I can spend an entire week and even year teaching you about the Holy Spirit. But a few things for you to know about the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit is God, not an archangel, not one of the spirit beings, not one of the doves or candles like the Bible shows us in types and shadows. The Holy Spirit is God. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the creative dimension of the Godhead. That means the manifestation of power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also the manifestation of the presence of Jesus to the believer today. That every time you call on Jesus, the person Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father today, the Bible tells us, but the personality who represents his presence every time you call Jesus is the spirit of the living God. He's the Holy Ghost, spirit of the living God. You're the Holy Ghost, scepter of the King of Kings. You're the Holy Ghost, seal of the age to come. You're changing everything in obedience to Christ. So the Holy Spirit has an assignment. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit to the believer, listen carefully, is to activate your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit because the bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of god neither can they profit him because they are spiritually discerned spiritual things cannot make sense to you except and unless you are open to the ministry of the holy spirit are we together now that is the reason why some of you are now active practitioners of the things you once laughed at for instance the prayer language of the spirit before you got born again and before you were open to his ministry it sounded like gibberish now you are an active uh, 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 prayer person especially in the spirit because the holy spirit has quickened the bible calls it quickening then the holy spirit is responsible for revelation and understanding very very powerful paul praying over the church in ephesus you find that in ephesians chapter 1 beginning from verse 17 down to 20 paul was praying over the church in ephesus and he prayed that they be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of their understanding be flooded with light that they may know comprehend the hope of the calling that they now were in very very important without the holy spirit the bible will only be a book of history a book of literature it takes the holy spirit to open the mysteries and the riches that are hidden in scripture listen the bible was not supposed to be just read philosophically or intellectually academically in as much as the bible is a book of literature the bible is a book of archaeology the bible is a book of history you find the all the aforementioned in scripture but there is a spiritual component to the bible that only the holy spirit my goodness who is god speaking to tonight an attempt to study scripture without submitting to the ministry of the holy spirit will only frustrate you for such people the bible says ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth because they do not have revelation remember the utopian enoch he was reading the scripture while he was on his way to jerusalem but he did not have understanding and the holy ghost had to speak to philip to join this chariot and then the man said of whom this man spake of himself or another it takes the holy spirit for you to have understanding in isaiah 11 
the Bible talks of that stem from the root of Jesse and it talks about the sevenfold dimension of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord, dominion, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. It talks of the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And then it says, it shall make you of quick understanding. Are we still together? Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. I will forever sing your praise it's your spirit that opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no great man that you know today in this nation and across the globe including our father in the lord that the jew you see that the mysteries that they have access to is credited to their submission to the person and the ministry of the holy spirit there are many of you here who have had visions of mighty mighty things that god will be doing in and through your life and yet you have ignored the ministry of the holy spirit there is no possibility of becoming if you ignore him the holy spirit is beyond the pentecostal phenomenon the holy spirit is beyond the charismatic phenomenon jesus gave the holy spirit as a gift to the church the guarantee that we will become is someone hearing now this is important for someone god is speaking to you it's important to embrace the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad I did. Look what he's made out of my life. The Holy Spirit, listen, can turn darkness to chaos. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, when there was darkness and chaos, it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and then it says now the earth was dark and void and formless. From the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos. And then it says, but the spirit hovered round the face. Every time there is darkness and void, a life with no color, a life with no beauty, no dignity, doesn't matter how it happened to your grandfather, to your father, you submit to the Holy Spirit and see what he's able to do. He is brooding over every darkness he's causing lights to shine from darkness the holy ghost is brooding over every darkness he's causing lights to shine so are we still together now we're dealing with the phase of renewal and transformation and I'm introducing to you the person of the Holy Spirit. And that the Holy Spirit quickens your spirit man and your organs to help you comprehend spiritual things. Now you will see value in fasting. Now you will see value in prayer. Now you will see value in going to church because your spirit man has been quickened. Attempting to force religious activities on people without the Holy Spirit sponsoring the quickening will only lead to a burdensome ritual. It is the Holy Spirit that plants passion within your heart so that you will do things that seem to be laborious but with joy because your spirit man has been quickened. Is someone hearing now? 
So the Holy Spirit activates your organs of interaction with the Spirit. Being alive unto God, the Holy Spirit is responsible for revelation and understanding. Very, very important. Hear me please. It is at this point of renewal and transformation that you now begin to learn the ways of God. The Holy Spirit introduces the word of God to you. Now the word of God can be valuable to you. Listen, the ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the word are the two principal forces that sponsor transformation and renewal. There is no superstition to transformation and renewal. It is your ability to immerse yourself in fellowship with the Spirit and to be studious of Scripture. It says, and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, it says, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, and now brethren, Acts 20, 32. And now brethren, I commend you to God, it says, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It is the word of God that builds. The word of God helps you to understand the modus operandi of the kingdom. Now you know how the kingdom operates. You begin to learn what the Bible calls the ways of God. And you see according to scripture, the ways of God precede the glory of God. You cannot see the glory of God until you understand his ways. Moses said, show me your ways. Then he said, show me your glory. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. The Lord commanded Moses. He said, this is the thing that the Lord commanded that you should do. And then the glory shall appear unto you. There is something you need to know. And then it empowers you to do. And then the glory comes. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, the B part says, But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong, capacity, and they shall do exploits. It takes knowledge, then becoming, then doing. You shall know, then you shall be, then you shall do. You cannot do without knowing. You cannot do without being. Are we together now? You now begin to know what the Bible calls the truth. And the Bible says with the truth comes liberty. You will know that you know the truth because you will begin to experience liberty across various aspects of your life. You now begin to learn scripture that there is he that scattereth and yet tends to penury. But there is he that uh, scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty you are understanding the economic system of the kingdom now you are understanding the value of prayer the bible says for instance in john in mark 11 and verse 24 it says verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when you pray that means your desire remains unfruitful until you mix it with prayer that automatically activates your prayer life because the word of God has given you spiritual illumination. Luke 18 and verse 1, he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 17, he says to pray without ceasing. Are we together? Now you start engaging fellowship and prayer with the spirit and the ministry of the word i give you a guarantee as you begin to submit to the spirit submit to the ministry of prayer submit to the ministry of the word and evolving begins to happen in your spirit the weak you starts becoming the strong you the timid you starts becoming the powerful you the foolish you starts becoming the wise you because the word of god is a compendium of the wisdom of god is someone learning so if your spiritual experience is unprofitable by this journey God is showing everyone where you stand there are those who are not even saved in the first place 
in the moment I'm going to be making an altar call and giving you a chance to make it right with Jesus. But for the many who are saved and yet your life is not fruitful and not profitable, I am showing you what is missing. You have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit alongside the fortitude for prayer that comes as a result of fellowship with him. The primary assignment of prayer is not to get things. The primary assignment of prayer is as a tool for growth and transformation. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. It says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. Is God speaking to us? Yes. All men ought to pray, not as a burdensome ritual, not as pretense to show spirituality. It is part of the spiritual growth protocol that helps men. So every day you are praying, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours, as God grants you grace, then submitting to the ministry of the word, something begins to happen to you. Listen very carefully. I can assure you, submit yourself to the ministry of the word. Submit yourself to fellowship with the spirit. Submit yourself to the ministry of prayer. And something begins to happen to you. Illumination comes to your mind. Spiritual understanding comes to you. Ah. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me Lord like a candle. Light me Lord. Light me Lord. Light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Listen. Can I tell you one of the ways that you measure your growth and maturity in the spirit? Listen very carefully is to begin to measure your speakings the bible says when i was a child i spoke like a child is that true i understood like a child i thought like a child that means the word of god affects these various faculties of your life your thinking your understanding and your speaking now let me get to phase three very quickly is god speaking to someone i hope you've not forgotten what we're dealing with three phases in that believer's journey the first phase is the starting point, an encounter with Jesus. Jesus says, I am the door. Not one of the doors, the only door, the way in fact. Now you get to the second phase, major phase, renewal and transformation. That by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, that by the ministry of consistent prayer, that by the ministry of the study, of the word of God among the many things that happen in this phase too is a revelation you see the more you know God the more you understand yourself the Bible says as we behold him as in a mirror he says we are changed you will become like what you are seeing it is at this phase that the revelation of purpose and destiny comes to you it says lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will by the time you find God God will now begin to show you the blueprint of your destiny you will find yourself gravitating along the areas of your destiny some of you may be five friends praying together studying together you will find one of them begin to diverge to the ministry of the prophetic unusual passion for prayer and fasting the holy ghost is doing a work in that man now he's beginning to he may not even know us at that time that that is what god is doing because you see when you meet god he does not reveal destiny he reveals himself it is when you find him first that destiny becomes profitable when jesus met the disciples he said follow me not follow it no you don't follow it when you come you follow him in following him you will find it whatever that it is follow me and i will make you it is only him that can make remember he's the maker of the heavens and the earth 
but it is not only the heavens and the earth he makes he makes men too purpose and destiny now you begin to know that this is what God has called you into out of the abundance of the vast encounters out of the abundance of a life dedicated to learning to doctrine to prayer to fellowship with the spirit it is impossible ladies and gentlemen to maximize this phase of your life and not have a rich robust profitable stature in the spirit it is the absence of these that is responsible for weak believers ignorant believers and believers who are not profitable as far as kingdom come is concerned now watch this let me go to the third phase for the sake of our discussion tonight the third phase is the phase of empowerment and release empowerment and release release there does not mean leaving you empowerment and now releasing you to be a witness listen never stand before Pharaoh when you have not stood before God it is a risk to stand before Pharaoh until you know the God who has sent you when he called Moses Moses said don't send me to Pharaoh that man is a wizard and it takes more than English or Hebrews for him to deliver the people. I have the destiny of a deliverer. But who shall I tell Moses has sent me? Many of you were called but you are not yet sent and you started going. The fact that God called you does not mean he has sent you. He called you to himself. He sends you to the world. Let me repeat. He calls you to himself. He sends you to the world. I can call you. Let me use a gentleman here. Come, sir. Watch this. Have I called him? Has he answered the call? I called him to myself. Now go back. Who sent you? I don't doubt your call, but I doubt your witness. Because when he calls you, he makes you, he empowers you, then he sends you. God called me is not enough to be effective. God calls you to fellowship with Jesus. God calls you to fellowship with the word. God calls you to fellowship with the spirit. Then he sends you. He said, when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? When I sent you, not when you went. Is someone learning now? So the face of empowerment, this is where the Holy Ghost introduces you to the mystery of the anointing. My head, you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn, and I am anointed with fresh oil. My head, you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. Hear me. There are levels in the spirit where you collide with the power of the highest. In Luke chapter 1 from verse 35, when the angel brought glad tidings to Mary, Mary asked a question. Verse 34. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. Joshua Selman, how can God use me to build a global ministry? Seeing that I came from a village somewhere in Port Harcourt. Is it really true that one day I will be a mother to nations? Is it really true that one day I will be an apostle to the nations? Is it really true that one day I will take the baton? Of the fathers who have joined the cloud of witnesses mary asks a question how shall it be like god has told you many great things and little you is sitting there wondering can god really make something out of my life the answer is found in verse 35 
And the angel replied, Mary, Luke 1, 35. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the highest. Don't ask how you will go to the nations. Don't ask how you will go to Europe, America. Help them, please. The power of the highest is the mystery behind the exploits of men in this kingdom. It takes more than intellect and human connection. Hear me. It takes the Holy Ghost to make a generation hear you. It takes the power of God that mantles your life. It takes the power of God for the sick to be healed. It takes the power of God for the oppressed to be a pakatosh kadibata. It takes the power of God. Hear me. No matter how transformed you are, without empowerment, you will only be a frustrated, knowledgeable believer. It's important to know, but you must receive the engracing to defend what you know. There are many believers who can talk spiritual talk. I know my God. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah. He can lift. He can bless and we clap. Then when it is time to prove the reality of the power of God. Maybe God is speaking to a man of God. You have done well in the area of transformation. But this is the missing link to your ministry. To the point where if you say God bless you. People cannot say amen again. Because they are so used to the powerlessness of your speakings. Hear me. I understand our father in the Lord. That the Jew is going to be graciously visiting Port Harcourt. I think in a matter of days or so. A week or a little over a week. Such an honor and a privilege for your soul to be able to host this general, global general, again, a father of fathers indeed. Now, please listen. Baba can stand here and say, God bless you. And as simple and quiet as it is, the testimonies that follow... As at the time he's saying it, there are people who have no business rising to certain levels. But the kind of energy that has been generated through decades of interaction with the Spirit, that is the energy that is released. I flew here from Abuja and every time I fly, it's a lesson to me about what power can do. The same plane that is going to be flying 35,000 feet above sea level, it starts very slow. Sometimes you would think the plane is too big to fly. As it's moving, you will think all of the, the pressure, gravity, the force can stand it. But you see, when it starts at the wrong way, it begins to run. It gets to a speed where it becomes unfair for the plane to remain on the ground. Th there, is, there is a level of speed that when that aircraft gets to, it will lift within a moment and in less than a minute it's in the air for someone you are saying apostle have been walking slow there is the energy of the spirit coming on you a time will come in your life you will run like elijah then you will fly like the eagle help them please please hear me in this sermon tonight I just described for you my spiritual journey with God. Authentic power is beyond impartation. It will take a track record of properly following these faces. Many people keep receiving hands laid on them with an empty mind. The absence of a track record with the Holy Spirit, the ministry of prayer and the word. That's why the impartation does not serve. The value of impartation is that it comes upon a knowledgeable vessel. Are we together? The spirit of the living God. When that power from on high comes upon you, ladies and gentlemen, it is able to turn Saul into Paul. Ah, it is able to turn Sarai into Sarah. 
tonight the Lord has sent me here to give us an opportunity to experience all three phases for someone the first phase is your desperate need you were invited for this crusade probably thank you for coming for someone what you need is the grace and the energy to step into a season of radical transformation and renewal some of you who are already prematurely exposed in ministry may need to take a little break and say this shame and reproach that I keep bringing on the altar I am tired of it I need to return back and file myself not from a competitive standpoint but so that I can become a battle axe that cuts indeed then the final phase I believe there are many people here who are sincerely saying apostle I with all humility I can say that I've submitted myself to doctrine and learning but the power of God seems to be absent from my life my family my ministry and my business ladies and gentlemen let me tell you you cannot accomplish the purposes of God in the strength of the flesh and you see the thing about spiritual power is that if it is there it is there if it is not there it is not there there is no hoping wishing you can know that it has come he says such as I have you can know you have it we see the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain hey, open the floodgates of heaven let it Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Shema na na masia na na na. Shabra da tema na 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 masia na 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 na. Shalima na se na mania na. She na ne, she na na, she na na. Shalaga baraka ta prasa da balaka to shabra ka da balakos. Kebranda kebarato safra keshka debela kata praska bena kato siata. Kebranda kebaraka bakato shabra kata bela kata. Help ate kebaraka ta. Ete shabariata. Embra kato skanda bakata. Shabada 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 shabada. Embra kebera kete kato skate bena kata. Hear me. Prophet Joel said, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. But I, caught, I came by the road of a higher priesthood to sound an alarm that there is a revival coming. There are men and women of God that must arise. Arise, arise. Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee life. The ministry of the Holy Ghost bringing empowerment, bringing empowerment, capacity to represent Him as a witness. He said, But ye shall receive power, ye shall receive power, not just knowledge, ye shall receive power. Hear me. When that grace comes upon you, <laughs> Saul, you may be the son of Kish, but when you meet Prophet Samuel, you will be turned into another man. You will come to the garrison of the Philistines. Someone tonight is about to be turned to another man. Turned to another man. Open your mouth wherever you are. 
and begin to cry for the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth right where you are. Spirit of the living God. You are the maker of man. The quickener of our spirit man. Someone pray. Hallelujah, hear me. Hear me. There is a cloud of God's glory over this congregation. For some of you, God is saying, I've been waiting for you to hear this message. To connect it to the dreams that you've been having. You have been seeing yourself mightily used by God. But you've been saying, how shall I become that? This message was a roadmap for you. There are many ladies here. You will rise after the order of Deborah. Mighty warriors indeed. Mighty warriors. Like Deborah. Mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. Mighty warriors. Bring them out. Mighty warriors. By the spirit. Mighty warriors. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Mighty warriors. In the spirit. Now hear me. There are three things we are going to do here very quickly. Fire is about to fall in this place. Please, I want everybody, let your hearts be opened. Don't say you cannot receive, no matter what level and dimension. There is something more. Something more. Ministry without results, there is something more. Power needs to come upon your life. The world is tired of explanations. The Bible does not say they are waiting for the explanations. No more excuses. You need to access power from heaven. Now hear me please. Please hear me. Listen very carefully. Just leave those under the anointing. You don't have to distract them. There is a reason why we ask that they come. However... I want to pray. Remember what I told you. Anyone under the anointing close to you, please. You have a duty to help them so they don't injure themselves. But I need to pray. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. You are a The covenant keeping God Yahweh Yahweh The covenant keeping God Yahweh Yahweh The covenant keeping God Now, please hear me Without distraction for those who are going to be coming out now that I'm going to call, please be mindful of those on the floor so that you do not injure them in a very orderly way. I'm going to make an altar call. There is no point deceiving yourself and lying. There's no point cajoling you. You can know that you are saved. 
and you can know that you are lost. Based on this description tonight, for some of you, you have not even started the journey. In the custom of our father, I'm going to count one to five. Now listen carefully. In running out, I repeat, be mindful of those in front and use the spaces available. You are saying, Apostle, I came for this meeting. My heart has been yearning for Jesus. I just didn't know it was Jesus I was crying for. Or you are here saying, Apostle, I remember making this decision some time back. But as it is, I cannot say that I'm walking in the things of God. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there's no point pretending. I repeat, as you come out, be mindful of these people. I'm going to count one to five. Run like there's fire on the mountain and come to Jesus. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Please make sure you are really coming to Jesus. Two. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Three. Someone is finally winning that war of destiny. Nothing to be ashamed of. Come. Come. Everyone who thirsts, let him come. 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 Jesus. Something special. Supernatural about your name Jesus something happens when I mention your name come come if it is for Jesus I will still give you a few seconds come someday look up please One glorious morning you will wake up like any other day. Perhaps going to lecture for a student. To the market for a, a housewife. Going to your job for a career person. Perhaps going to church for a pastor. A crusade for another pastor. And then there will be a sudden disappearance of people. That glorious morning. When the trumpet will sound, you remember the old song we used to sing? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let's sing it one more time. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Hallelujah. Till he returns or calls me home Here in the love of Christ I'll stand Even after 30 years Till he returns or calls me home It's here in the love of Christ I'll stand As a man of God as a husband, a wife, a young child, an old woman, a CEO. Till he returns or calls you home. It's here in the love of Christ you stand. Now watch this. 
for those of you who are in front here thank you for the bold decision there are counselors giving you a card counselors leave the card so that they will see please make sure if you are if you are in front and you've not received a card just lift your hand and they will slip one counselors let's do that very quickly they would slip a card to your hand now please I, I do not think all of them will be able to complete the card immediately. I wish you do, but when it's time to pray, you may need to pause so you concentrate on the prayer. Um, if you can, it should take maybe less than a minute to legibly fill it with all your details because there will be a follow-up system. And then for those who are making this decision by television, internet, or probably you are watching by way of rebroadcast again across the nations of the earth, the US, Europe, and any other state in Nigeria, across Africa. Distance is no barrier. Jesus is calling you here at this crusade to the glory and the praise of his name. He's giving you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Now, for those of you who are in front, may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head. Remember, the starting point for the believer's life is to make things right with Jesus. Say this after me. Let it be loud and clear. Mean it from your heart and unto Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I'm born again. I am a child of God. Amen. Keep those beautiful hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you with gratitude. For no man comes to you except you draw them. And the Bible says, blessed is the man whom the Lord causes to approach him. You have caused these ones to come. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will no wise cast away. In the name of Jesus and by the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare over you that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken. Every legal access the devil has over your life, by the blood of the eternal covenant is hereby broken. In the name of Jesus. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I commend you to the ministry of the word. I declare that from tonight you'll be grounded and established in righteousness. you go forward ever and backward never. For in Jesus mighty name we pray. Now. While we clap for them, may I request that you all please move to my right, which will be your left from where you are standing. There are counselors who will have a word with you very quickly. Please do comply with them. They will have your details. Just pray with you and you will quickly join the remaining part of the service. Can we give them a big, big God bless you as they go? Go ahead, celebrate them. Go ahead, celebrate them. Is this the best you can do for them, Port Harcourt? Hallelujah. Now, you are still part of the service. Don't feel left out because you're just moving to the left. Um, let me just take about five minutes if you would spare me that time. I know that our time is fast spent. But may I request that you lend me five minutes just to speak over someone's life. I do not believe that a people will gather unto God this way and go back the same way they came. I do not believe it. The God that I serve 
is a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. My God is a miracle walker. God is, you are a glorious God. God is, he's a miracle walker. God is a glorious God. God is a destiny changer. God is a miracle. Hallelujah. I want to quickly pray. We may not have the time, sadly, to take testimonies. I'm not sure. But it's important that I do this. You see, the preaching of the gospel was designed to go hand in glove with the ministry of signs and wonders. Are we together? In John chapter 4 and verse 48, it says, Except ye see miraculous signs and wonders, ye will not believe. So I want to pray. It's going to be an all-encompassing prayer. God is already ministered to people and is still ministering to others. I'm going to pray for the sick, pray for the oppressed, and for those of you who are trusting God for any miracle and any manifestation that becomes a consolation to your Christian experience. Here is your chance to receive. I believe in the power of God. I am a beneficiary of the power of God, not just a dispenser of the same. I know what the power of God is able to do. So may I request, if you can, just stand for a moment and then I pray for you. I want to minister to the sick now. If you are sick in your body, I want you to place your hand where you are trusting God for a miracle. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. We believe in him that he died and rose from the grave. We believe that he's able to heal, he's able to deliver, he's able to bless. I want to pray for you right now. I want you to believe in the healing power of Jesus. In as much as we, for the constraint of time, may not have the opportunity, or perhaps we may just have one or two or three testimonies, and then you can share the remaining at the subsequent sessions. The most important thing is that you experience the healing power of Jesus. Saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Such a strong presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Now 
hear me? In the name of Jesus Christ, there's such a strong anointing that is touching people right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know why God does this thing sometimes, but it's very strange. Watch this now. I'm about to pray for you. No, 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 no. Please don't, 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 don't do that to the gentleman. Please, someone guide these people. Don't do that. Please take him back. Don't do that. You're going to hurt the gentleman. Please. Don't do that. It's wrong. Please don't do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Now watch this. I hear a very loud shout in my spirit. When that shout happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to flow. This is what I heard in my spirit. This is the shout. The Bible says the shout of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. Shout a loud amen as I begin to pray for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I decree and declare every devil of infirmity in your body, around your life, I command it to give way right now. Be free right now in the name of Jesus. Be free right now in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, I decree and declare, be healed now. Eye conditions, be healed now. Deaf ears, I command be open now. Bone conditions, I declare be healed now. Help them, please. You don't have to bring them out again. Don't worry. You don't have to bring those under the anointing again. That's fine. Just, just manage them where you are. There's someone you could not hear with your, de your left ear. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every blood condition here represented, I declare, be cleansed right now. The Lord is showing me at least four ladies. For two of them, you have, I don't know if it's been medically verified, but you have multiple lumps, your left breast, multiple lumps. I'm seeing the power of God touch you. I declare that that devil leaves right now. Now, that devil leaves now. Help her please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Peptic ulcer. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Peptic ulcer. Again, I say, be healed in Jesus' name. There's someone you have suffered from pile. Pile. Very painful pile. The power of God is touching you right now. I don't know, but the Lord is showing me a woman who is a sister to someone who is here. Seven years, she's not had a child. Seven years. This is what I see in my vision. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, let this be the season of fruitfulness for her. Please help her. Let this be the season of... Help them, please, my God. Look what God is doing there. There's someone who is having... I don't know if he's had palpitations... But I know that it's a cardiovascular disease. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, be healed now. God is showing me one, a gentleman. I don't know if it's that you lost your sense of smell or you cannot smell at all completely. In the name of Jesus, let it be restored now. Let it be restored now. You are having sleep abnormalities. You go to lie down and you barely sleep for 30 minutes and that's it. You are not able to sleep again. The Bible says, but he giveth his beloved sleep. I decree and declare that whatever medical issue that is, it comes to an end right now.
every bone problem I command be healed now every problem with your joints I command be healed now in the name of Jesus HIV be healed now negative genotypes change now There's someone you have a problem swallowing. I don't know what problem you have with your throat. It's, it looks like, you know how you swallow food and it doesn't go completely. It's been like that for a long time. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you right now. The power of God is touching you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, you are a bit elderly, maybe in your 50s or thereabout. You don't seem to be able to stand in the sun for a long time. The moment you stand for a short time, you start having, it's like breathlessness and tiredness, like a nauseating feeling. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare unto you, the power of God is bringing you healing right now. And for some, you may not be sick in terms of bodily problems, but there may be serious problems around your finances, around your family. Let me prophesy upon you. He said, I prophesied I was as I was commanded and there was a sound. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to receive this prophetic word. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and leave. Every closed door over your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus. Believe it. I speak to that door. Be open now. Help them please. Help them please. Be open now. Ephata, be open now. Embargo of shame and reproach that the devil has placed as a garment over you. I tear that garment off right now. I tear that garment of shame and reproach in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Master, we have toiled all night. There are many of you who have labored and toiled without profit. A grace is about to come on you. I decree and declare, go forth and start excelling. I pray for those who are students. Who said in chapter 32 and verse 8 of Job that there is a spirit in man? He says, and the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty, is able to make men of understanding. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I pray over your mind and your intelligence. Step into a dimension of godlike intelligence, retentive capacity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. For everyone who made it for this crusade tonight. I prophesy to you. From January till December. I command laughter. I command laughter. The sound of sadness and mourning. Will be far from your habitation. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm still praying over your life that when men say there is a casting down, as for you and for your loved ones, let your testimony be that there is a lifting up. It says your gates shall be continually open. They will not be shut day and night so that you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. Hear me. Everyone who has been mandated by God to hold your hand, as a destiny helper this year, I speak to the north, to the south, the east, and the west. 
I call them to gravitate towards your life. Hallelujah. Let me speak to someone as I prepare to wrap up who has gone through negative seasons and it looks like your service to God has not brought profit. I have a prophetic word for you. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, in this season, my God, who is also your God, is doing a new thing. My God, who is also your God, is doing a new thing. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for someone who is in the order of Gideon, coming as the least in your family and the least in the tribe. And it looks like nothing good has come out of you. In the name that is above all names, I speak to you. By the grace that lifts men from their lowly estate to the place of nobility and honor, may that grace locate you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please make sure you are receiving these prophetic words. They are not empty, believe me. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It was not his fault. He had seen a track record of great Nazarenes fall, like Samson. Men who would rise and not live long. They did not have longevity of honor and results. I pray for someone. Any pattern you have seen in your family. People dying before their time. Women becoming the men and men becoming the women. All kinds of negative patterns. My Bible says blotting out every handwriting and the ordinances that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross. Be delivered once and for all. Help them please. Be delivered once and for all. Hallelujah. We're wrapping up. And every spiritual force that has constituted itself as an altar impeding the growth and the progress of men let me speak to you lift up your heads O ye gates over Potakot, over god's people be ye lifted ancient doors and let the king of glory come in i decree and declare these gates and doors give way to your destiny Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there is anyone here, the spirit of untimely death is roaming around the corridors of your life or for your loved ones, that the devil has vowed that there must be a cry of premature death over your family. I stand in partnership with all the graces here represented and we declare the fullness of your days you must fulfill. The fullness of your days you must fulfill. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you finally for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I want to end my teaching tonight by encouraging you that it pays to live for Jesus. There are many distractions in our world today from social media to status quo, what we believe defines civilization. I cannot end this meeting without charging your heart. The Bible says, listen very